and they were like talking trash to Steph Curry from the bench. Mm. And he takes a three right in front of him. Before it goes in, he turns around and says, shut up. <laughs> and it goes in. <laughs> Can straddle you know how we, how we start off the podcast mm-hmm. all the time? Gotta... I gotta hit mine too. That actually kind of hurt my ears. That was really loud. <laughs> <laughs> that was really satisfying. But welcome back to the Two Peas in a Pod podcast. I am your host, Micah, with my co-host. I'm sp- oh, Nathan. Hello. It's been a while. It has been a while. I thought you were just going inter- to say Nathan. It has been a minute. But you were like introducing yourself. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Well, you got to get back in the flow. It's been, what, a month? Yeah, about a month. Um, Crazy, bro. But, you know, it's all just due to, to miscommunication. At, yeah, at its at its finest. And holidays, well, Mother's Day, we didn't do anything, right? Father's Wait. Day, yeah, but we still could have done it. It was just it we could have, but like no, people, but like I'm saying, like we couldn't, like maybe we didn't do it on a Sunday, but we could have oh, done yeah. it on like a Saturday night or something like that. Yeah, for sure. So we, it's all miscommunication. We always because our scheduled day is Sunday, but then it was like, oh, want to go get breakfast, and then oh, I'm doing this. And it was just never, we just got to make it like either do it every Sunday. And if we can't, then pick another day. Yeah, we got to, yeah, we just got to know in advance. Mm -hmm. Um, But hopefully there's no technical difficulties. We've been struggling with that for a while. Yeah, Um, it looks good. It's still recording. But everything looks good now. (laughs) So hopefully it stays like that. the camera still recording? Oh, it's definitely still recording. Perfect. So... I think we're good. <laughs> One day we had that not record. The another day we had the camera not record. I know, dude. I was so upset. And then there was just a, a still was a good picture of, just, of us. And it was like, the, we could have pulled so many clips from that. Fire clips. But fire clips. I have been feeling a little a little down about, you know, not posting clips. I know. Our one clip went so big. I was like, Don't yeah. Worry. Uh, I was like, we made it, mom. <laughs> I was like, mom, our clip got like 200 key views. I don't know how much it was. No, it, it has was like a hun- almost 180 yeah. on TikTok, which yeah. is kind of crazy. Yeah. Um. So if you haven't yet, I, I'll put my TikTok in the description. Hopefully I mm-hmm. can remember. Yeah. Um. But to get this podcast started as well, um, we are making a two peas in a pod playlist on Spotify. Mm-hmm. So be sure to like that playlist. We're going to be adding songs to there like weekly. Yeah. You know, songs that we talk about on this podcast. Yeah, I sent you the link so you could add songs. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I call it the Two Peas Playlist. The Two uh, Peas pl- Okay. Wait, actually, no, Two Peas in a Playlist, I think. In I a Playlist. That's actually clever. The only thing is, two peas in I was playlist. thinking about it this week. There are definitely other podcasts called Two Peas in a Pod. You think? Or Two Peas in a Podcast. Yeah, 100%. Why? You just think so? I, I've never I found one. I went on YouTube and just typed it in. Yeah. And I think there were like two. Oh. I don't think they were anything big, but they were still were they like, consistent. I don't know. Okay. I didn't do like any research. Maybe they're they're dead, and we're not. We're I not. hope so. But I was like trying to think of names, other names that maybe we could rebrand into. I like the two peas in a pod because of just us and two our relationship. Uh huh. Yeah. And also the name. I like the name as well. Mm-hmm. And I thought about it at like two a.m. after I woke up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. That that name holds a, a dear place in my it heart. It just came to you. It did just come to me. Uh, it was implanted on my brain. Maybe it was Inception. Maybe someone went to your dream. Ooh, maybe. Would that that could have happened. That would be crazy. But I was thinking, like, what if it was the Two Trolls podcast? <laughs> Two Trolls podcast? <laughs> yeah, because it fits us. Yeah. Does yeah, it not? No, yeah, we are mad trolly for sure. But I don't know if that would, uh, I don't know if it, it doesn't flow as nice as two peas in a, in a pod. Yeah. Two peas in a pod is, yeah, that John flows perfectly, but also like two trolls, two trolls. Yeah. I, the thing is ever since you came up with two peas in a pod, I haven't even thought of any other names. So I wouldn't, yeah. I would have to, we'd have to see, but also we need like cover art. You know what I'm saying? You know how like there's the people have their artwork for their podcast. Like if it's, what do you mean? You know how like if you're just listening on like Spotify, the artwork or like oh the, yeah 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 the, the sure. album cover. We need something like that. That is true. Um, I'm definitely not artistic enough to you, do that. You so know have to, who like, is who? Our cousin Colin. We freak. I really, bro. Oh wait, wait, wait. Also, 
Nathan just went out this weekend for oh our for two Eliana's days. Yeah, my cousin sweet had a 16. sweet sixteen, and I knew Colin was like artistic, right? But like that guy is he's just naturally good at art, and I didn't realize. But he, you know, like caricatures, like the exaggerated, yeah, yeah, yeah. like drawings. He did one of me in like 10, 15 minutes, bro. And I'll show you. Oh, maybe we could get it on. Yeah, the pod. we could definitely get it on. Uh, but like, look at it. I had my do rag on. Oh bro, my god, he did that in like ten minutes. Wait, what? Yeah, he did that in ten. It was crazy. Wait, what did he do it on? His iPad. He just did it on his iPad. He like has okay. a, he has like a pen and everything. And I was like, yo, this guy could like branch out, learn a whole bunch of different art styles. I guarantee he could figure something out to like. Uh, yeah, hundred percent for sure. But it would be really cool. It'd be, like, that would be cool. You. It'd be fire, bro. Yeah, I don't know what. Yeah, I, I don't know to... like what our art style would be. Yeah. Um. Be something cool. But it's been a long time. You yeah, know, um, a month. From the la- since the last podcast, I shaved off all of my hair <laughs> went and I, I said i might i think i'm gonna shave off my hair yeah and i did it he did do it and i i probably went like like two weeks maybe of just shaving it all the time yeah and then i was just like you know what i kind of want to just grow it out again mm-hmm. but since i'm like kind of thinning yeah it looks terrible right now yeah so i just gotta having, let it so i'd be having hats on i got the braids um finally but you know once it gets to a certain length then it'll look fine and i could just you know chill dude you gotta let that john grow i know no not that long, long. No, not no. like mine because mine's kind of too long i gotta no, just it. back to what it like was before okay okay but yeah. my hair grows freaking fast yeah so it shouldn't take that long uh-huh yeah this is the podcast first time seeing me with braids which has like been my normal thing it is for tough. a little while now yeah i it's got the so box braids got it got in the back the two antennas as my girlfriend <laughs> likes to call them the not the antennas, not the antennas. <laughs> but i love them for some reason like i get cornrows and box braids and i just love box braids better yeah i love being able to put them up and i just like this style yeah box braids are tough so bro at this sweet 16 you know that age kids don't kids are like so self-conscious or insecure whatever they don't like to be like the first one on the dance floor they don't like to be dancing when there's only like two people dancing yeah and so i we get there we eat the food you know the the kids start playing music and or the dj starts playing music I have two amaretto sours, but they were like really small, and I was like, "Don't worry, I got this." <laughs> I, was like, I got this, bro. Vera's not here because you know Vera, our sister, is like, if there's like a dance floor and there's a DJ, she's out yeah, there dancing. She's like the first one. She's sure. out there, but we didn't have her, so it was just me. And I said, "Step aside." Moved everyone over. Got this. Grittied on the floor. <laughs> the white, and I was going in the whole night for like three hours. I'm sweating. I'm drenched. And finally, by like probably the last forty five minutes to an hour, every like Ellie was on the dance floor with her boyfriend, Colin with his girlfriend, and then their friends were there, and they all started dancing. But that wasn't until out for the last hour. I was there for three hours, just doing everything, just going in. And I needed to. I needed to. It was my job. To get those kids comfortable, cause yeah, they like. Well, I don't think it's just kids like that. Little behind. I kids. feel like most most people just wouldn't want to be the first one on the dance floor dancing. I don't know. I see, cause from working weddings, it's usually like they just don't. Adults well, don't care. if they have alcohol, yeah, then they're just like. That's true. I guess alcohol is a portion of a, a thing about it. Yeah, but it was mad fun, bro. And um, yeah. The DJs were little behind kids, so they were really? hyping me up. They weren't little. They were definitely like <laughs> teenagers, maybe like 16, 17, 18, around that age, just hyping me up. Like, you're the life of the party. I was like, yeah. Wait, were you literally the only one on the dance floor? So they played. What did they play? I forget what they started the night. They did like dinner, and then they were like, all right, we're going to start playing some music. And I was like, all right, I got this. And I walked on. I think it was me and Valak. Oh, Val- they Yeah, were Uncle Louis was there. Yeah, oh, so me and Valak. And we started going in, and then I got Kyler to stand up and start dancing, and then Trace came over. Trace was like, "I don't dance," and then he came and started going in, doing his like break dancing stuff. Yeah. And then Jackson came. So all bro. the little kids, like the little Trace's behind kids, don't care. Comedy. Yeah, <laughs> Trace is so funny, bro. He kept calling me. He kept going. With, um, oh my gosh, what was he calling me? Harry Jungle. Because <laughs> at, at at Titi's house, I freaking wearing shorts. I'm mad Harry. So he's like. Shut up, Harry Jungle. <laughs> <laughs> like, shut the freak up. Like, How old is he now? I think he has like seven, that right? Kid is Six or so seven. So funny. Bro, like, he, actually. Yeah, yeah, he's hilarious. He's oh, smart. and he goes, 
he's like, "Ooh, I like those shorts. I bet your mom knows they're missing." <laughs> <laughs> he said that. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to make fun of my short shorts. A little seven-year-old just coming like, up to you and saying that. No, yeah, I know. so funny. Like I can't even flame him back. I'm just like, "Shut up, idiot!" No, I'm joking. You know what? That's actually perfect that yeah. you just said that. Why? Okay, I was thinking about the two worst things that you could. The two worst feelings in the world. Okay. And I did extensive research. Mm -hmm. I talked to, you know, neuroscientists around the world, psychologists, you know, sending emails all around. And, um, you know, I've come to the conclusion based off all these studies, mm -hmm. that there are two really bad feelings where what? it's just like, I'm sick. Yeah. The first one, you're hanging out with people. You know, things are going on. Mm -hmm. You know how it is. Like, it's, you're socializing, things happen. So you start Good laughing. Time. You know, you're having a good time. Yeah. So you say a joke and it's like a, oh, and it it's, it's a joke and you know, it's funny. You know, it's funny. And it's like a callback from something that probably happened earlier, earlier in the, the night. Com earlier in yeah. the night. Yeah. And no one gets it. Then oh, the heart sinks. The heart sinks. And you're just like, you're sick. Yeah, you're just, you just sick. bombed. Bombed. But I think oh. that there's a worse feeling than that. Okay. You know how you just were talking about Trace and you got roasted by a seven-year-old. You couldn't say anything back. Yeah. Okay. So I did. What it just if, wasn't good. What if you come up with like a good roast? You're just like, yo, you look like a, like a mixture between Lizzo and Ice JJ Fish. Yeah. And everyone starts laughing. They're like, oh, yeah, that's yeah. so true. And they're like, I know what you are, but what am I? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, like, what do you do? I, what, you're just like, uh, uh, dude. I remember in middle school, everyone used to say that crap, and like, what? It, it's just annoying. It's so annoying. It's so ratty. It's so like, annoying. Oh my god. I know it's you, I, but what am I? <laughs> <laughs> it's so frustrating when someone does that, bro. The not only is it frustrating, you freeze. You yeah. don't know how to respond. Exactly. So you, someone hits you with that, and you're like. You can't resp There's nothing you could say that can like that you can respond. And it's like the most beta response that they give. Yeah, it's they, so that means beta, they haven't thought of anything. It's so beta. Yeah, but for some reason, at the same time, it just alphas you. Like yeah, then you hit the tie loop. <laughs> <laughs> you just the tie loop. It's all good, bro. But I forgot to shout out the sponsor. I know it's been a month. Um, but it's crazy Monster. how how much they, they still back, how much bro. they still they still support this uh this small podcast. So thank you, they Monster. Keep, they keep coming back, bro. They give me mad energy. They give us all the support in the world. You know, you know what? The water. Th th this this isn't sponsored today. Let me freaking rip this. Okay, okay, just leave. I can't. It's fine. Just, <laughs> I can't rip this. Just, <laughs> Wait, I'm gonna just get it. leave it. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna get it. <laughs> okay, no, just leave uh, it. Okay, I give up. <laughs> Because you have no nails. I don't have nails. But I can get it. Come yeah. on. It just if, takes if patience. You get, if, you, if you get scissors. I don't need scissors. Bro. Then why are you doing it from that end? That's where the thing is at. Nah. You got to do it from like the, the looser end. And then just. Just rip that, John. They're all, yeah, all the ends just are Just yank loose. it. Can I bite it? Okay, just leave it. Just leave it. Just leave it. Just leave it. Elephant in the room. <laughs> Elephant in the room right now. <laughs> what is it? Drake released a new album <laughs> called Honestly Nevermind. Never mind. And I'm like, bro. first of all, he stole my line. <laughs> I say never mind, bro. It's all good. Bro. I do that all the time. It's all good. That's that's <laughs> literally what I'm known for. Um, and he stole it from me. So mm -hmm. Drake, I kind of want some Cred. monetary uh, I don't know the word. But give me some freaking money for stealing my yeah. phrase. Yeah. Honestly, you should have like been tweeting that. For the past two years and then you could have been like dang drake found my twitter and stole my freaking line i know dude i know but but he did release a new album honestly never mind um and we haven't talked we we sort of mentioned it when we, we mentioned were at, few things when but we, we were, were at dinner to. or whatever but we we didn't talk about it at all no because i wanted to save that discussion for this podcast mm -hmm. and honestly never mind no it's like <laughs> no it's like not honestly though honestly First time I heard it, talk, talk it, bro. I was like, eh, not really that much of a fan. Second time I listened to it, 
I was like, dude, Drake actually did something here. No, no, Bro, no. This is his best album yet, hundred percent. This is you're sure. No, <laughs> he no, no, like, no, no, this bro, is, this is, no. This okay, is no. Okay, go. This is his best album yet, bro. All right, go on. Um, you know, like the thing is, I think you have to listen to it with headphones on. That be changing everything. I did like you did? Yes, I did. When? Like, were you working or something? Yeah. Okay, but well, I was listening. You be painting. You paint though. Yeah. Like. I was like vibing, bro. Like at work. You don't think I'd be vibing? No, I'm saying like one day I was just at work vibing. Okay. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to turn this on since I'm vibing and maybe that'll fit the mood. And you know what? It fit it perfectly and just enhanced everything. And everything's a banger. No. Okay. Not everything. (laughs) No, not everything. (laughs) Not everything's a banger, but a keeper banger currents banger sticky banger oh. massive banger overdrive banger liability banger jimmy cook's banger oh, no. i lost full you know it's it's because it's um it's a dance album it's not really a rap album people were going into it expecting drake to just be dropping all these bars you know flow switching you know changing ambitions you know that's what people were thinking he was going to do but he came out with a dance album yeah, all right, keep going. And I'm people sorry. were just thrown <laughs> off by it. Just, <laughs> all right, you want to hear what I think? Well, okay. All right, wait, you, all right, so Anthony Fantetto said it perfectly. And then when he said this, I was like, this exactly is what the album sounds like. And it sounds like he had people make some music. And he's like, I want it to be some dance music. Get like some of the best stuff you got or whatever. Send it to me. They send it to him. He goes in the studio, just riffs, just free. Free flows. I'm just gonna go whatever pops in my head. Yeah. He first take. I like it. Puts the song out. And <laughs> okay. that's that's but what it felt the like. The thing is, is sometimes that's the best because it's so no. organic. No, but it's like, not like he like it wasn't like he sat there for hours and hours on end trying to come up with some line that's like clever. No, this is straight from his heart, bro. <laughs> but there's a difference between like. You could make trash and it still be organic, but there needs to be like a radar where you're like, okay, yeah, I shouldn't put this out. Like it was organic, but it's not good. Dude, he had some like good bars too. (laughs) (laughs) What? I'm I'm so serious. The thing about it though, that's hilarious is like everyone says how it's a dance album, but no one is is. dancing to any of this music, bro. No, they are 100%. They are for sure. I listen to it and it's like, Something you have out in the background. Like, it's background music. You know what I'm saying? It's not dance music. Look, you're just a hater, bro. <laughs> yeah. Look, Drake, I might be a Drake, Drake hater. Drake tweeted it out. He was like, no. he said something along the lines of, like, he didn't say y'all hating now, but he's implying, like, y'all hating now, but just wait. Yeah. And I think that that's what you need to do. Watch, in, fo- in four years, this Sean's going to be popping, bro. People are going to look back four? at it. Four years. Exactly four years. People are going to be like inspired by this album and you're going to be hearing a lot more music like that. Not going to lie, bro. I'm, I'm disappointed in you. <laughs> okay. I'm just disapp- because I got to come clean. <laughs> Let me come clean. Yes. <laughs> because yes, I am trolling. hundred percent. I am trolling. Of course. I know. I didn't mean anything that I just said. <laughs> um, but on, but I do the album. I don't think it's like terrible. No, but it's not good. It's not. It's just like, meh it's mid it's below mid actually it is below mid it's like i i do think you know if people are into dance music they would enjoy song. the song the album a few songs um but no i don't think any no one will get blown away by this mm. at all there's no song that's like oh this is really good not a single song not a single song you know it's crazy <laughs> cob is better than this album and i hated cob I did not like. I didn't hate. I didn't C-O-B like C O B better. But the, sure. I was talking to a kid at the party at the Sweet Sixteen, and I was like, "Drake's new album's not good." And the kid's like, "What? No, it's amazing, bro." No, and no, I was like, "No." He was serious, and I was like, "How old was the kid?" It, he was Colin's age, maybe like a little older, seventeen, eighteen. I was like, "Wait, you're serious?" And then he was like, "He's like, but the last song with uh with Twenty One Savage." I was like, "It's okay. It's like a decent song, but I'm not gonna say it's it's not compared to." Like 
any of the good songs on Scorpion. Yeah. And don't say Scorpion. It's Scorpion. Scorpion? Scorpion. Everyone says Scorpion. Yeah, because they're imbeciles. All right. Well, it's called having... Why would it be Scorpion? Just called having an accent, bro. Some people say Scorpion. Some no, people say Scorpion. Some people say a, water. Some people say a, water. No, it's having a freaking goldfish IQ. Some That's people say is. Arkansas. Some people say Arkansas. Okay, no one says <laughs> Arkansas. <laughs> Do you know it actually was Arkansas, but because of like something that happened in the town do, years yeah. ago or the the state, they just started saying Arkansas even though they I knew do, it was spelled I do wrong. Know that so dumb. It's called accent. But um, I really hope that. You know, Drake steps it up, like maybe his next project. I think what he should do, because he puts out so much music. Yeah. He should wait two years before he releases something else. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I mean, when you look at Kendrick, you look at all these artists. Yeah. Um, Kendrick, was it four years? Yeah, something like that. Um, nice. But yeah, I think he should just wait like two years, then put out a project. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, I don't know. To it just me, feels like what, he doesn't patch up. Go. Yeah, like what you said um, yeah. about like someone making a dance beat and yeah. then Jay being like, "Oh yeah, I'll just use that," and then just like do some stuff <laughs> over it. Um, yeah, that's effort just gap. What happens. Effort gap. I, no, I think he I don't works, blame him he though. Works really hard. He definitely works. If really he hard. does, the thing is, if he didn't, I wouldn't blame him because like, what does he have to prove? Yeah, he doesn't really have anything to prove. I just think like it could be he, like he wanted to go and like try something new. Yeah, but, I respect it. When you try when you try something new, you actually have to like go really hard. Yeah. Like you can't just, you know, give it half effort. And that's sort of what it felt like to me, at least. Well, cause he's had some good like songs that what's that one song that he did with Rihanna? I Take Care. Or Yeah, yeah, I know. That's like a dancey beat song. That could fit right in on the album. But that's a good song. Yeah. Like it's a really good song. Yeah, but he also had Rihanna on the track true so but that he could have got some features dude honestly though rihanna might be the the goat she's a beast everything bro. that she's on just goes off like everything goes crazy all of the lights fire literally everything yeah she's a beast bro um so yeah disappointed in jake's last two albums i think scorpion is really underrated mm-hmm. people always like put that at like jake's worst album no nah. but i feel like there's good tracks on it so yeah a lot of people said it was boring but like you listen yeah, to, to me. CLB. CLB to me was not interesting. Yeah. It wasn't that it was boring. It wasn't interesting. Yeah, to me, CLB was like, okay, I have this formula. I'm just going to stick to this formula. Mm-hmm. So that's that's what that was to me. Um, But I feel like there's like a perpetual burp that's just not coming out. It's from that monster. It is probably from the monster. Mm. Um, I was thinking about it this past few weeks. Mm-hmm. I was listening to Coldplay, and I put it on Shuffle Play. I heard you taking a shower. But I did it at work. Okay. And I was like, Coldplay's discography is kind of nuts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's insane. Like, Yellow, The Scientist, Viva La Vida, Cl- Fix You, Clocks, Clocks, Yeah, Paradise. Mm-hmm. They have a lot of, like, songs that were They huge. just have a lot. But not just, like, huge songs, but, like, genuinely good songs, too. Yeah. In songs that like everybody knows, yeah, it's crazy. Like everybody knows Coldplay. I know every single person. And I just didn't even think about it until I put it on Shuffle Play. I was like, "Holy crap! They're kind of goaded." They are. They. I think they're the highest grossing tour for real. They're up there. I think they're like top three or top. It was like um, U two because they've been around forever, and they and then Coldplay. <laughs> I think Coldplay's That's wild. Too. Yeah, yeah. Because I just saw. Tyler's fiance and like Tyler's mom, I think they went to a Coldplay concert yeah. in probably Philly and they're in this huge stadium and it's just like completely Built. packed. And I'm just like, what the heck? I, I didn't even realize. Huge. I was like, I did not even realize. You don't that. realize. It's weird because it's like I, they've probably had two out, al- two or three albums released since their one like single adventure of a lifetime that got like pretty popular. Yeah. And it's like, I haven't heard anything. I haven't heard anything but they're so huge yeah they're massive but i think it's also like a global thing oh like yeah globally because like in america they might not be as big but everywhere else they're freaking huge. i still feel I still like they're, they're really big in america i mean there yeah, are a lot are. of people who just like they just put on the radio mm-hmm. and that's just how they listen to music mm-hmm. and coldplay i feel like is always on the radio with something 
Uh huh. Yeah. Um, they've had a hit in like early 2000s, 2010s. Dude, they've had a hit since. Yellow then. came out in 1997. Or maybe it was 2000. It might be 2000. 97. That sounds so. It might have been 97. Low are we key, that? But like, let me check. Let me check. I, it, are they probably, that old? Dude, they're old. Dude. I know Chris Martin's old. Dude, the they're singer. old. That's wild. 1997? <laughs> I wasn't okay, even born. It, okay, no, it was two. It was 2000. Okay, but I still, born. I was there. That was when you were born. <laughs> yeah, 22 years ago. Oh my. Yeah. Like they've been around forever, dude. Yeah, and making hit after hit after hit, and like collab, they do like collabs. Like he collabed with Kanye, he had that song with Kanye. Oh yeah, with Martin. Yeah. So it's like that song was mad good too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he he like everyone in the music industry loves him. Like they they love to collab with him. I know yeah. Jacob Collier, the jazz guy, I listen to he they they're like big friends and they did stuff together. So yeah, yeah. Um, I love that guy. I mean, there was. You know something that happened this uh, very recently. We're not going to go too deep into it because I don't want to really talk about politics much mm-hmm. on the podcast at all. Um, but obviously the Roe v. Wade situation. Yeah. Um, and like I said, we're not going to go into it because you know that's just not what I want to do. But at the same we're time, not a political podcast. But at the same time, what is annoying is being pro life and seeing people and like on Twitter, Facebook, whatever social media, mm-hmm. and their views on pro-life people. And they're like, it's so they disgusting. Understand. They want to oppress women. Yeah. I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, no. Does. We just value the baby's life. Yeah. That's, that's essentially it. Yeah. Like, we say the, that baby's life is just as valuable as I am. Or as yeah, you are. Yeah, exactly. It's making an equal so, like, playing field. So, like, if you think that that's disgusting like you gotta i think like you just gotta check yourself yeah yeah, or at least like there has to be some sort of empathy going around from every person on the country yeah um it's become so political that it's really annoying yeah and i think social media just exaggerates it because you're not meeting anybody you're not talking to them face to face yeah it's the same reason why like people like like hate on Ben Shapiro or like if Ben Shapiro has a thing at a college they yeah. try to shut it down yeah because like they think that this guy is like super hateful but it's like if you were to just like talk to him or something yeah you'd be like oh actually he's a really nice guy yeah they'll say something like he's a white supremacist but he's like and he's like a neo-nazi but he's Jewish like people have no idea what they're talking about yeah <laughs> but I think social media just allows it because like there's mm-hmm. no room for discussion it's I'm going to type in my opinion and then there's the algorithm yeah. whatever you're into Mm-hmm. That's what you're going to see. And you're on this side or on your this side. There's no common yeah. ground. There's no middle. There's I, th- no I think it's different on Twitter. You just see left stuff. Yeah. Unless you like follow right leaning yeah. um, things. Yeah. It's which I don't bad. follow any political <laughs> figures. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so or just, I like, don't, I don't really follow oh, many people sorry. at all, but like, mm-hmm. um, like sometimes you get those things like, I don't know, you don't follow them, but for some reason it's just on your feed. Yeah. And it's always left leaning. It's never right leaning for me. Yeah. I don't ever, I follow a few, but. It's mostly left leaning, but I feel like majority of people that are like when you're angry about something, you're going to go to Twitter when you're happy and celebrating, you're happy and celebrating probably with you're out or you're doing something. I don't think people are really going to Twitter that much. So all the people that are mad are tweeting about it. Yeah, that's why we're getting a majority of that. But um, yeah, I've I found a when this is the last thing I'll say and then we could move on. But saying pro-choice and pro-life they're political terms and they don't get you anywhere because they put you in this like box it's like um so like the argument is pro-abortion like or anti-abortion that's what we should be talking about but like people are saying if you're anti-abortion then you're anti-women you hate women you're against women's rights and like that has nothing being against abortion has nothing to do with and it's also it's it's just well it's it's also it's it's um it's labeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's really easy to to label someone and then not view them as a person. Mm-hmm. And this is what I was talking about with like the empathy thing. Yeah. Um and I was thinking about this because, you know, with Elisha and mom when Elisha brought up like the thing in the bathroom. Like yeah, the yeah, story. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I was just like, just have empathy because like not everyone is like you and some people are moved by different things than you are. Mm-hmm. Um for sure. Like most, I mean, everyone pretty much is against human trafficking. 
mm-hmm. but some people are really passionate about it mm-hmm. and they yeah. really want to make a difference in this aspect mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. some people are really passionate about climate change and you know littering and all yeah. that stuff some people are really passionate about abortion mm-hmm. um and just recognizing that everyone is passionate about something else mm-hmm. yeah. and that's okay like you need to yeah. have that empathy being like okay this person actually is is moved because of like these issues mm-hmm. and yeah. they really feel something from that and i might not feel that same way but that doesn't mean that i should hate them yeah. for being passionate about that you know what i mean yeah i saw it's people just, tweeting like, like all that. that is is just that's empathy mm-hmm. that's all it comes down to and yeah, i think sure. you know with social media and stuff people are are lacking empathy yeah um also la- like lacking understanding which is empathy of like the other people's side like you said so it's empathy but it's like not knowing and it's both sides too not knowing facts or not yeah knowing things about people or what they believe yeah like labeling box we're talking about the same thing like yeah it's a problem knowledge is like you definitely need knowledge Mm -hmm. but i think you you can't be knowledgeable about everything Mm -hmm. like you just can't um so i think the most important thing like you start with empathy Mm-hmm. And then just go from there. Because mm-hmm. if you have empathy, it doesn't matter like what side you're on. It's like, okay, we can, it's basically like you're just viewing that person as a person first before yeah. their beliefs. And you're seeing like, you know, mm-hmm. like they're the good things about them and just like interacting with them and getting to know them. Cause then yeah. you're just like, okay, this person's actually not a mm-hmm. terrible person. So, yeah. Um, right. But yeah, that's the last thing I really want to say about that for sure. Yeah. Um, definitely been a hard time no i haven't even been on social media when it happened i was in the car and going to connecticut and i saw you know all the tweets and i was like all right i don't feel like dealing with this so yeah i just tweeted w for the black community (laughs) yeah yeah because we black i know we love that i was dying (laughs) kai Kai told me and he was like (laughs) he was like um yeah kim saw he was she was like kai did you see nathan's um instagram yeah she was like i hate nathan <laughs> <laughs> good bro no I, I had more people swipe up and were like oh like good like cool that you posted this than like people no one swiped up to hate me because it's like <laughs> i did that on purpose because someone swiped up to hate me i'd be like so are you racist yeah, then yeah, yeah. <laughs> just as bring, like a troll you bring the freaking race card into it Ex- that's exactly what i did i mean I could say it because I'm black, right? But I was like, yo, this, if anything, this is letting more black people live than anything. So I tweeted, I put that out on Instagram just because I, know I was like, no one could say anything to me. <laughs> if you're saying you want more black people than die, that sounds wrong. <laughs> it sounds terrible. So no. honestly, though, lose, I lose. really hate black, white. Just oh, like for sure. People take so much pride in being black. And yeah, like, I just don't get why people are mm-hmm. so prideful about that. Like, you're just a person. Yeah, like, I think mom and dad raised as well. That's just how I view it. Like, yeah, for sure. I don't know, because it's like you get black people who are like, oh, if you don't date, if you don't marry a black girl, then yeah, like you're, you're not, not support, black. you're not really black. Yeah, and it's yeah, like, yeah. bro, what? Yeah. Like, why are we taking so much pride? Yeah. and the color of our skin crazy like I, like we're all human like i feel like it just shouldn't matter at all it like, shouldn't matter at all. it's like people recognizing black people in certain things mm-hmm. like how um it was it was actually really cool with the nba and adam silver mm-hmm. um because like he was doing a press conference mm-hmm. and with all the coach the coaches there's i forget it's just a like 50 50 black i don't know i don't know what the the number is for the coaches yeah for the oh, coaches okay. or something and they like brought it up to him and he was like no it's a great thing but this shouldn't be the news mm-hmm. yeah like and that's my thing like why are we just recognizing this stuff mm-hmm. like i feel like that just kind of just puts a divide in everything yeah did so, you hear i think it was morgan freeman this was a long time ago like but they were asked him um she was like what's how do we end racism or like whatever He's like, stop talking about it. Yeah. Like, stop talking about how there's this separation between black people and white people. Um, what was I going to say besides that? Oh, yeah. I think mom and dad raised us really well because dad, you know, he has his, he uh, loves his pictures of all of our 
you know, yeah. family from, you know, like past generations. And he's like, he would tell me, he told me he was like, our family, they've been, you know, inter, not intermarrying, like intermingling with different races when even before it was illegal, like when, you yeah. know, it was still frowned upon or whatever. So it's like, they've been doing it for a while. Black people and white people are always been getting, getting along, but it's like the politics that had the split. Yeah. It wasn't it like that before, right? You had black people marrying white people before it was illegal. And then now, and then it was illegal. Then so there was just like, you know, segregation. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So it's nice to have our black family. We have so, we have Scott, we have Scottish man, we have Cherokee Indian. So it's nice. It's nice. Mom and dad raised us, raised us good. And it's also dad didn't raise us prideful. He just made us yeah. know, like, know where you came from, know our history. You know, we had our, you know, whatever great, great, great grandfather was a slave. Yeah. But not prideful. Yeah, exactly. I think that's like the biggest thing. Like, just, don't take pride in the color of your skin. Yeah, just work hard. Like, and I'm not saying like, don't be ashamed of it. Obviously. Like, I just don't think there's a point of being like, I'm proud and black or I'm proud and white. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, that doesn't matter at all. Doesn't matter what color your skin is. Yeah. Like, you're just a proud person. Like, take pride in who you are. Yeah, and your work ethic. Like, I feel character. like your first, your identity shouldn't be, I'm black. Mm -hmm. but that's like the black community that's just like their first thing yeah i'm a black man I'm a, yeah 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 i don't know but i i think the over emphasis on it is because of like obviously media is like a big thing it's like because yeah. of the separation that they've created and the division that are created between black and white people it's like you have to be proud you're black because you're so oppressed and this and that which it's like, dad just told us, yo, work hard. You're like, you're not oppressed. This is what they taught me when I was younger. They taught me that, you know, I was held down by the white man. But he, we live here, makes money as yeah. a family, you know. Like, so. obviously, like, history has its repercussions. Of course. Like, we're yeah. still feeling the ripples, uh, the ripple effects of, you know, our history. But at the same time, mm -hmm. like, the country doesn't have anything, no laws. Yeah. Nothing that's putting minorities down. Yeah. And it's beautiful and, that way. And in fact, like there are things that, you know, help minorities mm -hmm. rather than put them down. Yeah. Like I, it's literally the opposite in college. College is big because Asians have such a hard time. Yeah. Getting but I'm, just, I'm just saying like this whole like um, idea of like the country still putting people down. No, it's not. It's lifting it's, people up. Yeah, it is lifting people up. And at the same time, it's just hit, like people, just, we just got to understand their history has this repercussions. We still feel those effects today. Yeah. Like where, you know, minorities are located. Yeah. Like the majority are in like really high dense, po densely populated areas. Mm -hmm. Um, But like, yeah. So I think like understanding that. And just being like, you know what? I actually don't have to stay here my whole life. I can mm -hmm. move somewhere else. Yeah. And like, it is easier said than done because obviously there, there's family mm -hmm. and there's financial situations that come up and you're like, okay, I need to, you know, so help support my family and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but I think at the same, like, yes, there are those situations, but a lot of those situations, like they're kind of smoke screens, mm -hmm. yeah. like and excuses. Mm -hmm. And like you can look at them as valid excuses, which they might be really valid to you, yeah. Um, at the moment, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, like I think for the the majority of the time, they're just kind of smoke screens. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and people just want to be comfortable. Yeah, for sure. Hey, Kendrick, I love his, his album because of that. He he talks about like fatherhood, working hard, all this stuff, and it's like that's what we need. We need more Kendricks. Yeah, people to talk about being a father, cause. I mean, dad had his dad, but dad didn't really have grandpa. Grandpa really didn't do anything, didn't do much. So, um, yeah, it's crazy, man. But I agree. Are we going to move on? Yeah. To some more music? Yeah. I mean, what else, What are the music? Frick, man. Let me look. I, I got, got some stuff. Actually, I, I do have a... Harry uh, Styles released an album. I you know what? I still didn't finish it. Really? I listened to, like the first few. I listened to the song you sent me, obviously, and I listened to like the first two, three songs, and I just didn't. I think like the first couple songs, I'm not the biggest fan of. 
like they're not like bad but i just wouldn't really listen to them much again yeah little but freak was good that melody in the chorus is i think once it gets to as it was it as, gets yeah. better as it like was everything really. else after that yeah. but little freak my favorite song off the album i love that song dude yeah that chorus is that melody oh, i so know good. i know <laughs> it's crazy it's good. so good oh my god it's a beautiful melody for sure you know it sounds so familiar but i don't know what it sounds familiar from but it's really know. nice but that that melody just if you haven't listened to little freak listen to it like i said we're gonna have the spotify playlist we're gonna add yes. that song and other songs we talk about i'm gonna that. put some brook in the bluff on there i started the i started the podcast with miss no not the podcast the playlist with miss nomer that you already song, started the playlist you put songs on there already? i put a song yeah miss no oh, just one yeah well because okay, yeah, we in order to start a playlist you have to oh. put like one song so that's what i started it with okay but you well, know yeah after this i mean we'll we'll add some songs to it yeah we'll put a link down and you guys start listening to some fire music that we got if you guys love music yes. you, you know, know oh oh i was gonna say no cap <laughs> this might be my ego i was thinking this the other day i was like yo i think i have the best taste in music on the planet <laughs> that's what i thought and then i was like you know what i can't say that but i'll say me and mike have the best taste in music on the planet together there's not really anything he shows me that i hate that, or that i don't like i don't i can't think of anything and there's probably a few things that I that I've shown him that he oh I, there's one thing that he doesn't like no. that I know for sure. Okay, for okay. Sure. Did we talk about this before on here? I don't know. I don't know. I, we might have. We might have okay. in the first episode. Yeah, we we yeah, oh, we, yeah did. we did. We definitely talked about it. We did it. talk we did about talk cigarette talk daydreams. Yeah, we, the bat cigarette daydreams, man. That song is okay, so good. Okay, here's the thing though. I would probably like the song if, if it wasn't for that experience yeah like yeah. i actually like i'm not gonna i'm not gonna cap like i don't really hate the song of course but it's just like it's not a song you could hate yeah it's just one of those things like i've already i've took it this far there's no going back <laughs> yeah you have to keep going yeah. like i gotta take it to, to the grave yeah um but it's just, it's just funny because of that story. Like, yeah. it's just really funny. To the, yeah, for sure. But it definitely doesn't suck. Honestly, though, not much me, me, new music uh, for me. I've been listening to, like, Brook and the Bluff. I, it's, like, my go-to. And I always yeah. go back and just listen. I, are Ile. they lonesome? Are you lonesome? Oh, you know him? I've been listening to a lot? What? Projector by Eden. Mm. Dude. That's a spatial song, I man. could listen to that song literally on repeat all day. I don't know what it is about that song, but I love that. That might be that's like my favorite Eden song. Really? Yeah. Dude, I used to love um so the first Eden song I ever listened to was I think Start and End. And I was like I don't know if that was the first, but it was the first one I reckoned like I was like, oh, this is a good song. And then I found rock and roll. So like Start and End and Rock and Roll were always number like one and two. Icarus was up there because then that album came out. I yeah, love Icarus, Icarus is fire. Uh, Yo, Nathan, you gotta like low key, uh, talk like into the mic. Oh, am I not talking in and, enough? And project. Am I not? Project. I'm sorry. I'm tired. <laughs> it's all good, it's all dude. Good. We lost Clash last night. Got second. Dang. It's depressing. Explain what Clash is. Oh, so it's every two weeks. There's League of Legends, uh, like online on like the, what's it called? The client. There's tournaments that League hosts, and it's like an 18 bracket. It's a small, you know small little uh tournament we lost because of co what a surprise what a surprise co. no I, I really don't know if it was co's fault i we just always blame co pretty much but i know he got turbo stomped with tj in the bot lane. i'm pretty <laughs> sure it was his fault so dude well i feel like co just like he just does his own thing yeah like, sometimes he just not be caring no but i think he does try but like it's more of like a communication and teamwork thing, but it happens with all of us because it's like you sometimes you do that all the time for bro. sure. Yeah. Well, cause like, I ping cause pinging is so natural to me now, but I don't say it. Cause yeah. I'm used to just solo queuing. So I just ping and I'm like, I pinged it. And it's like, just say it. And I'm like, Oh, you're right. You got me, dude. I played, um, I haven't been playing COD much recently. Did you play controller all? with Kai? Kai said he played controller. Yeah, he played controller. <laughs> How was that? John? Yeah. He wasn't that bad. He said he was piecing a little bit, yeah, but he, he said he couldn't, line up any nades <laughs> <laughs> yeah he couldn't he couldn't at all it was really bad i'm like isn't that the easiest part yeah but um no he actually wasn't bad but like i played with austin and i feel like that kid actually plays a lot, a lot. is he getting he nice plays more than me and i haven't played in like a couple weeks hopped on with him and 
I thought like, because you know when you take a break from COD, you get back on and you're like, holy oh, crap, this like, feels foreign. Yeah, and Dude. it's like sensitivity so high. And that always happens to me every time. Mm -hmm. But I hopped on and I felt good, bro. Like I was like, holy crap, the this, first time this never happens. That's crazy. And I'm just piecing. And I'm like, dude, how am I still better than you? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, Austin, he's, he's hit his ceiling. He has, but I just don't get it. Like he should, but like, it's, it's just a, he can shoot straight, but he's just brain It's a dead. brain gap. He's brain dead. It's a brain gap for sure. Dude, that's the pro, like everyone could always shoot straight. But sometimes you just do terrible things or your timing is so bad. Like a lot of it is brain and timing. And you know that Austin. Oh, you good? You yeah. know that Austin, like since BO3, that man just. That's also gone. how I feel about Kai. Kai's, yeah. Kai is so brain dead. The but thing like, is, he doesn't realize it. The thing is, is Nathan, he's. We I'm, were on Bocage. Oh no, what do you do? He has an auto. I'm not he has an AR. Yeah. And yeah. usually, you know, that's a, a slower weapon. Yeah. You hold like long lines of sights and stuff like that. Uh-huh. He was running around like he had an SMG. Oh. I was like I'd be doing crap like that. I was that, just though. like literally throughout the game, I'm like, wait, Kai, do you have a, a sub out? And he's like, No, I have an auto out. <laughs> like he'd push out things before me. Dang. Like it'd be P You taught him. You he'd taught him be, well. <laughs> he'd be P one. We'd be P1, and I'd, like, run to, to Z, mm -hmm. and he's there before me. That's the fruits of your labor, though. You know why? Because you'd always tell him, push out. You got to push out. Now it's in, in his DNA, <laughs> bro. bro. I think no matter just... what gun he has, <laughs> I promise you. I don't think that's it. I think he just likes doing it. Yeah, like he, he might. I think he genuinely is like, I love doing this. He just like doing crack mode. Yeah. yeah, that's why I think running a sub is easier because the AR is so much easier to shoot. But running a sub, there's so much more room for error. You could do like the dumbest things and just get a two or three piece. Yeah. Like no, AR in this you, game, especially. You, I in running an auto, I get caught sprinting on Gavitu. I'm dead. just dead, yeah. bro. Like, there's no sprint can't like coming off your screen killing when people. When I use an auto, I feel like I'm the best player on the planet. Yeah, like really I just gun every. That gun is so easy. If you have dude. a good brain with the auto, it's so much easier than the MP4. Like we played a Gavitu. And I'm just like, yeah, I'll just run a, an AR. Honestly, you might have to throw Kai in the MP40 if we play a lot because, because it's a brain gap with the auto. That is Let true. the people with little brains run the MP40. But the thing is, when you have a big brain and you're running the MP40... Yeah, it's so impactful, too. Yeah. Your impact on winning is insane. You're right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, we haven't four stacked it's at depends. all in this game, it by the way. Because like, if you're solo queuing... And you are really good, you're really impactful, but you're using a sub. Yeah. I feel like you have less impact. But when be. you're and when you're solo queuing and you're you have an AR, mm -hmm. you have so much impact. Because you can just control spawns. You're holding these long lines of sight. Yeah. And then you can pull out your pistol if you need to push out a cut or something. Um mm -hmm. but fire. When you're playing with a four man, yeah. I think you're more impactful with an SMG mm -hmm. than an AR. Definitely could be. Do you think? Did they add a map yet? A new map, competitive. Um. Besides, no. didn't they add a they the added control a, Berlin control? Oh yeah, they did add that. They put Alexis Texas in the game. Um. Wait, really? Yeah, but they're not gonna add that to the, what? The they rotation. have to make that SND. They're not going to. Why not? Because it's so late. Yeah, it's just so late. Uh, but they need something to spice the game up, man. The game stinks bad. Dude, the thing is, I have so much fun playing. Anytime, like. Ka just to me, like, that's just my baby. Yeah, I know. Like, I put you on. You did put me on. Speaking of babies. Dude, we're going to be freaking We're about to uncles. be uncles. Well, I'm going to be an aunt. No, I'm joking. Remember? Do you remember? You kind of look like an aunt. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember the, uh, it was the Joe Zanagato video. It was like, oh, my, uh, my uh, nephews are going to be born. Or I forget what it was. I can't wait to see if I'm an aunt or an uncle. Do you remember oh, that? Oh, yeah, I do yeah, remember that. that. Was like, oh, my gosh. It doesn't matter what the baby is. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't, you're just going to be a dumb aunt. That's it. Dude, that's, it, it's freaking two weeks. Yeah. On the 6th, bro. The 6th. Yeah. All they have to do is wait three days, and then they share dad's birthday. I am worried, though. Why? Dude, 
the fight that Elisha and I got into was it nuts? It's not good. No, I didn't. So I didn't hear anything about it. All mom was like, "I'm sad." <laughs> <laughs> she was like, "We need to pray for your brothers." I was like, "Okay, mom, we'll do that." Yeah, but she was like upset. But I was like, "Everything's gonna be all right." Like the thing is, like, I wanted to confront him because I was like, "Okay, he's about to have twins." Mm -hmm. Like. I just want to like confront him and fix the situation or like, you know, try to make progress in our relationship. And let me guess, he went five steps backwards. Yeah. Or like a million steps backwards. <laughs> so like, that's so sad. Like, the thing is, I don't have problems with anybody except him. And like, so I, I came up, I was just like, <clears throat> essentially I was just like, okay. I don't, <laughs> I don't really like you, um, and it's because of this, this, and this. Okay. And not even because of the past, because mm -hmm. it was like a period where I was like indifferent toward him, mm -hmm. like I wasn't like angry or anything toward him. Mm -hmm. Um, but then, you know, just after like living with him and stuff, yeah, it's just like things building up, like from stuff that he does. Yeah. Like, um. I'm not going to go into it, but yeah. you know, like some stuff. And it's yeah. just like, I don't care about the past. Yeah, yeah. And I was trying to make that clear. I don't care about that. I'm not holding on to it. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to hold on to that. Mm -hmm. Like if, if you were like, if you were Nathan now, like, mm -hmm. let's say like his personality, just like not his personality, yeah. but like the way he went about things and he just worked on that. Mm hmm. I'd be like, I actually have no problem with you. Like, mm -hmm. I'd be able to, like, develop a relationship. We could fix things. Yeah. Um, but I was like, okay, like, this bothers me. And it's not just that it bothers me, like, because he was like, um, no, you're just holding on to things in the, in the past. That's why it bothers you. And I'm like, no, it's not that. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, I'm not the only one that this bothers. Mm -hmm. Like, other, other people are bothered by these things. Mm -hmm. And he essentially told me, it's your fault that you're bothered by it. I'm not going to change it. And I'm like, <laughs> some people, you can't change who you are. No, but it's not that. It's not his personality. Oh, it's because like, he's, he's, that's part, like part of his personality. He's, he's like, he can be over the top and he's passionate. Mm -hmm. And that's not the bad thing. Mm -hmm. It's like negative things. Yeah. And then acting that. And then the, who he is, like his personality Neg with the negative yeah, things. Yeah, the negative things going it's through like, the lens of his personality. Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah. It's not the personality. It's the negative thing. Mm -hmm. And I tried to make that clear. Mm -hmm. And I, th I did make it clear. But he was just like, yeah, I mean, it's your fault. You're bothered by it. Like, and once he said that, and he said it like three times, like throughout the conversation, uh, we talked until like 5 a.m. Yeah, I heard that you guys talked a long time. And I was just like, there's no middle ground then. Yeah. Because, yeah, what I, what I need to do better is try to let things go and not hold of on course. to it. Because... Like, who I am as a person is, I don't know if I told the story on the podcast, but remember when Vera was telling the story about when Elisha, when we were living on Mill Street, oh, and that, he got into a fight with it's dad not, yeah, and yeah. ran out it's the house, and Vera starts laughing. Yeah, and you, you and were, like, I traumatized like, by it. And I was like, it's not funny. Yeah, yeah It's not funny. Yeah. And that's just who I am as a person is, like, um, when, when situations are going on, I, like, those, they weigh so much on me. Mm -hmm. Like they stress me out and like it's just really really heavy mm -hmm. and i think like i get that from mom yeah. so like a lot of things like they just rub off on me yeah and so you know with the really negative stuff i feel like you know a person like vera who laughed at the situation mm -hmm. like she's she will get bothered by the stuff but it's easier for her to let it go than like me yeah so like what i have to do is try to let these things go mm-hmm like that's how it takes effort. Yeah, you exactly. Really try, yeah. And that's what the middle ground should be. Mm -hmm. Is like you try make that effort to not bring all these negative things in. Mm -hmm. Um and just work on that make it a habit and then I try my best to not let these things, you know, weigh yeah. on me so much. Be yeah, be considerate. You guys both work on things to yeah. try to memorize. But once you say, "Oh, it's not my fault. It's no. your fault." I'm not yeah. changing. Then it's like it's one sided. There's, there's it's one sided, and we can't make any progress. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So all I'm hoping for is you know when the kids get here, um, little softened heart. Yeah. 
Exactly. So, yeah, I, um, I was talking to mom about this and I was like, I think their problem, why they struggle to get along with each other for years is their egos are astronomical. <laughs> both of them, both of them. <laughs> and I said, here's why. And, um, I was like, cause Elisha, you talk to him, especially growing up. He talked to you like you're his father. Like he knows what's right, what's wrong. He knows yeah. like he's correct in his version or what, what he experienced his, ex, you know, experience is correct. What he has to say is correct. And right. And a lot of people are like that. A lot of people are like, yeah, not sure. know it alls, but like sort of, or like I've experienced this. I've been through it. I'm older. I'm the yeah. older. Um, and you're, you get that not because you're older, just because you're smart and you do know a lot and you are you're like, you guys both experience and know a lot. And so now it's just two people that know they know a lot or think they know a lot and aren't going to as quickly like drop their position or what they believe in or what they think. Then you have what you guys have, but you guys are like, it's been years and years of it. Yeah. You know, it's not like it's the small thing and then it's been, you know, yeah. 20 but something. I think 20 like the biggest thing is it's not even the past. Yeah. It's yeah. what's like still happening. Yeah. And that's what I try to make clear because I could let it go like seriously. Um, but at the same time, like I, my ego is freaking massive. Yeah, for sure. Like somewhat, somewhat. Um, I told mom, I said, mom, it's a pride issue. But it's, the thing is, I, I don't think like. I think I'm pretty reasonable. Like if yeah. someone like brings up something to me and I, and I'm wrong. Yeah. Like I'll admit that I'm wrong. Yeah. And you're also not, you're not super quick to shut things down. Yeah. So you, I think you're willing to listen and hear, but I still think you're stubborn. Oh, hundred percent. Like you guys I'm are stubborn. both probably, you guys are, well, mom is stubborn too. That's probably where you guys believe it. Yeah. You guys are just hella stubborn. Yeah. No, I think we all are. Yeah. I'm definitely stubborn, but I just, I do think I'm really reasonable. And if it's like, like I said, like mm -hmm. there could be the position, like my equal position to him would have been like, you're doing everything wrong. You need to change this. Yeah. Yeah. Like you're the reason for this issue, mm -hmm. which I do think like that is the root. But at the same time, that doesn't matter. Yeah. Because you need to get to a middle place. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I admitted like my faults and where, what I need to work on. Yeah. Um, and I think that's the issue. That's mm. like. Yeah. I. So. Yeah. I was going to say maybe because how I always would have handled things. But I think it sounds like you did it was like tell him, yo, I'm going to work on this. I need to work on this because I know I'm not perfect, but I need you to do this because this is how this is it, this is affecting me in this way right and it's not good like it affects other people too yeah um especially with the kids like yeah small coming, petty like, things though like i drop things so fast like yeah. the bathroom stuff how how often do me and you talk about the bathroom i i asked elisha to you know do the tub and he did but it's like you know I, I'm not the best with the bathroom. I'm okay. But Elisha, we know he freaking gets stuff and leaves stuff <laughs> in the bathroom. Like, that's something small. Um, yeah, like, something like that, I'm not going to get... I'm, I'm like, annoyed <laughs> yeah, yeah. because I'm always the one cleaning it. Yeah. But I'm not, like, I hold hatred. Yeah, yeah Like, because yeah. you do the same thing. Like, I'm just like, I don't... Like, it's annoying. Yeah, yeah. But it's not like and I'm And we over-exaggerate it, even though we don't really care that much. We're yeah, but like, I'm not actually angry. Yeah, yeah, like for there's, sure. There's a big difference. Yeah. I guess me and Elisha, I've mended relationship with him more because of... I guess because... I don't really know. Maybe just who I am. Like, I'm very quick to drop things. I'm probably even quicker... I'm probably the quickest in the family to just drop something, move on, right? Um... Like me and Caroline, we get in an argument, I drop it, like it's done, right? I'm really good at that. And that's probably, it's weird that I have that and you don't. Well, the thing is, me and you are the closest age well, and we're the closest. First of all, the thing is, I didn't used to be that way though. You do drop things, but I think when it comes to us, I'm always the one to drop it first before you. Maybe. Well, you don't real. the thing is, I can't remember the last time we had like an actual. No, we don't like actually get into like real arguments, but we'll be like get it we'll get like a little annoyed with each other in gaming it's mostly happens in gaming now i can't even think of anything that happens 
I can't even think. I can't it's been think. a while. I remember one time a while ago. This I must have been like eight or nine or ten. I remember I got so mad at you and I <laughs> smacked you in the back as hard as I could. <laughs> but I don't remember what it was about. I just remember doing that. I don't think it hurt you really. I, I don't even remember that. So it probably did as, as I can. <laughs> as, as hard as I can. <laughs> Bang. Oh my god. So gosh. pissed. Um I think the last time I got super angry I was 15, 14. I yeah, was here. You don't get that angry. Anymore. It was in this house. That was the last time I threw a water bottle and then I punched the chair. Yeah, yeah. That was it. You used to I get, don't remember what it was about though. Angry. Angry, angry. Hulk. No. I don't know what it is. I just don't get that angry. Like, yeah. That's like probably like my best quality is like not getting that angry. Yeah, but you have something that might be worse. What? You have a smart mouth. No, I do. Because, sure. <laughs> like, I haven't, I didn't really notice it until maybe you got older and you got a little bolder. I don't know what it was. <laughs> but, like, at the park, people be talking mess and me i just ignore it like i don't know i don't care and you'll you'll say something back like you just chirp back i'm like oh my gosh my god like it and you know they won't do anything it doesn't matter yeah. but like that kid when, with, when we were playing the kids with the crocs and he said something you were like i just locked you up you, you scored once on me i was like oh my god i wouldn't have said anything just like what the well that's different though because it's like we're playing basketball yeah, but like I've seen so many fights, it's just not worth it for me. People are weird, bro. No, people are weird. I think it just depends. Like if I can like send, like if I know like a person's like on edge and would like try, try to throw. fight or something. Yeah, people be trying then, to like, throw. Then like obviously I'm not gonna do anything. But like when we're just like having fun. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. there's like some trash talk. Yeah. Like that's fine because it's fun like <laughs> dude me <laughs> when we were with tyler and justin i was like y'all are lucky <laughs> my trash talk was superb bro. <laughs> yeah, well, and i'm so bad i'm so trash <laughs> <laughs> i'm so gar no i'm not garbage because i'm pretty athletic so like i'm just an average player but i'm soft you I'm are soft, soft playing i'll admit you it started playing hard though did toward, i toward like like, Maybe because I'm just comfortable with y'all. I don't know. But no, I'm pretty you soft. at first. I wasn't. But then you started. Probably had to. Yeah. I started hacking. I started fouling. <laughs> I had to. <laughs> but it was mad fun. I still couldn't shoot. But dude, the last two times I've shot, you, I felt so good, bro. Yeah. I haven't shot. I, I was so shooting good. like every day. Like, not every day. But I shot like a every day, like one week. And then I was like. All right, I'm gonna do it again, and I just haven't gone to it because of games, bro. I kind of want to do it like every day, no cap. Like go for yeah, like after an hour. Work, go, yeah, exactly. It's like bug. it's nice. I burn you know some you calories. Need to do, do some sprints. Bop, 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 not and then sprints. start shooting. Not mm. doing sprints. Oh, that's just not gonna happen. But basketball, honestly, is probably is like the best sport, bro. Why? Like the most fun. The reason I'm saying it is because like you can play it by, by yourself. yourself. You can just go shoot. Like, what yeah. other sport can you just play by yourself? You could do T-work. Like, you could do T-work, but it's like... Is it really fun? No, it's just not. <laughs> it's you like, you work, could just shoot fun. basketball by yourself and have a great time. You could. I've done it. Yeah. <sighs> Baseball always has this special place in my heart. I feel like I can never say it's not number one. Well, the thing is, I think that it is number one, too. I think baseball is number one. But, like, as I've gotten older, it's like... You can't really play baseball. You can't. Because like there's softball and that's you'd have to get trash. eighteen people together to yeah. play baseball. Yeah, it's like how many do you even know eighteen people? Like, yeah. no, that's like what the heck? Eighteen people that could play baseball? F, yeah. That's it's, it's crazy. And eighteen people that have equipment. Yeah. It's like, that like know you, anything. Can, you can get like small groups together, but then it's just like it's not that fun. Then I'm hitting a, a <laughs> then I'm hitting an infield home run. Yeah. You have like five exactly. people. Just... It's not that fun. But yeah. basketball, you can have three people and then just play 21. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's mad so, fun. Basketball is goaded, man. But like, shout out to Steph. Playing serious baseball is just like unlike anything. Yeah. It's, it's really unlike anything. It's so mental. Oh, I miss it so much, bro. Me too. That's the thing I miss the most, just going to play baseball. Dude, I miss, I miss just, most. like, hanging on the fence. Mm-hmm. Not saying a word. Not saying a word, just staring. Atta boy. Dude. Occasional. You know what I missed? You know what I actually do miss? I lost all my baseball lingo. I don't talk like a baseball player anymore. I see. I was used to... You just go, like, atta boy. And you're like, oh. Hey, I never got babe. Stuff. Good job, babe. 
<laughs> hey, good eye, babe. Let's go. You know, things like, I just don't say, you say, let's go, baby. You say it all the time. Don't even say baby anymore. Don't say babe. Don't say attaboy. Don't say You anything. say baby. Not really. Yeah, you do. In like game, you would. I uh, really, I don't yeah. really hear it. No, yeah, you say it for I always, sure. I'm always like, let's go, Kai. Kai. <laughs> My son. No, no you, you definitely do. This guy Kai is about to climb a challenger, bro. He's Actually? Pl- no. He oh. might. He's, bl- he's Dude, he should try. He could he's do D- it. No, he's been trying. He's almost D3. He's okay, D3. that's dope. So if he gets he to D1. Can do it. If he gets the D one, he's probably gonna push hard. Yeah, for sure. Anything else we got? Anything? Yeah, I mean Steph Curry. Oh my! my the Warriors won the final. Father, bro. He is light skin father. Is our dad, dude. I I was saying I want the Warriors to win. I mean, me and Micah might be front runners because we grew up not Warriors fans, but we're not Warriors. We're Steph fans. We're Steph fans. We love Steph. Yep. And the culture he brought to the Warriors and how he's just basically like you hear the players talk about him he's just like this amazing leader everyone loves him they follow behind yeah. him it's great to see him win and like he deserves you, it you could just tell like he'd just be working so hard dude the yeah. stuff that he does like we were like watching the finals it was just crazy it was like this guy is actually unguardable mm-hmm. no one can guard him if he's missing a shot it's literally him just missing yeah rather than the defense like locking him up yeah like the defensive player of the year, he just blows by him like it's nothing. It, it was like, it was crazy mm-hmm. how good he looked compared to everybody else. Yeah. Compared to Jason Tatum is like, can like a, just a canyon, a gap, Dude, massive gap. It was like, this guy is just by far. Mental gap. Did you hear, gap. did you hear KD talk about it? No. He was on like a podcast Yeah, and they were talking about game four. Yeah. And they were like, and he was, and he said, um, Okay, I just wanted to make sure we were still recording. Um, I can't see, but it looks yeah, like it's it. good. Uh, he was like, it was crazy watching game four. It was like, this is one of the greatest players we've ever seen play. <laughs> yeah, bro. People better put some respect on it. And he name. was like, I played with him. Like, it, it's not just that he was making these crazy shots. It was the, re- he said it was the rebounding for me. He was like, when Steph is like going crazy on the boards, that's when you know that he's locked <laughs> in. Yeah, because he's just freaking. The, the thing that I loved the most about game four was in the first quarter mm-hmm. when they were down and then all of a sudden they, they bring it back. back. They bring, they take the lead. Steph hits two Yelling straight at the fans. threes yeah. and they were freaking crazy threes, like ridiculous. Yeah. This after the second one just starts yelling. Yeah. I was and like, he starts, and he starts like pointing at a fan and he's like yelling at him. Yeah. Dude, when that happened, I was like, whoa, I wonder what he said. I know. I want to know. So nobody bad. knows what he said. I, I want to know so bad, dude. He's probably, I run this place. This is dude, my I, I just wanted like, cause he was going toward the Celtics bench. Yeah. I just wonder what the Celtics players were <laughs> thinking. <laughs> That's what always when I'm that thinking. happened when he makes a three right in front of their bench. Like, what are you thinking? It's like, dude, oh. did you hear the, um, um, I forget. It might've been, it was, I forget who it was. It was Amari Stoudemire, maybe, or like, oh, or okay. JJ Redick, okay. or I don't know who it was. Pat Bev. Or it could have been um, Kendrick Perkins. Yeah. And it was like a serious game, and they were like talking trash to Steph Curry from the bench, mm. and he takes a three right in front of him. Before it goes in, he turns around and says, shut up. And it goes <laughs> in. <laughs> <laughs> what? Bro, that is different. It's ma- the, He actually... That it's probably the most devastating thing because it's like, what do you do? He's a freaking killer, bro. And it's bro. before it even went in. There, oh my there's gosh. There's like, there, there's like a, a group of people, and it's a small list of people that you just don't talk trash to. And he's probably, and, Ste- he's one and of them. Pe- yeah, Steph is one of them, dude. I was like watching this video, and they're talking about all the times like someone's talked trash to Steph. Yeah. And there was one. It was, um, when they were playing Houston in the playoffs, mm-hmm. and, um. It was at Houston, and this was when Katie probably was injured or something. I'm yeah. not sure. Yeah. But they went in for like the warm up or whatever, or Steph went in early, mm-hmm. and he knew that. And Chris Paul knew Steph was going to be there early, mm-hmm. so he scheduled like a thing like that for when he time. was going to be there, and basically kicked Steph off the court, so he didn't get to warm up like early before. Yeah. So the first half, I don't know if you remember this game, he had like zero points or like two points or something like that. Mm-hmm. The second half, he went crazy. Mm-hmm. Like, I think scored like 30 or something. Sheesh. They won the game. He goes back in the locker room, and there's like a video. So it was like a yeah, recording on their phone. Yeah. And he was like, kick me off the court again. <laughs> kick me off the court again. 
<laughs> Steps and killer, bro. bro. Yo, it's so funny. Like that is crazy. It's dude. funny because he's such a nice dude, bro. But like, he's a competitor. He's freaking. In- Did you hear the time he like chalk trashed to Kobe or whatever? I think he like fouled no. Kobe or something, and he he was like, "Don't miss the free throw, to Kobe," and he just hit it. And then something else happened. He just put Steph in his place. Like, dang. <laughs> but he was like, it was like a rookie, I think. So, yeah. But that's so funny. There, but there's mad stories with The it crazy too. thing is, is like, not only is he like the ultimate competitor and you like, you just, everyone loves rooting for him. He, you could see he's having so much fun playing. Mm-hmm. Like he's never just doing it because he has to. It's yeah. like so much passion. He cares so much. And he like. He cares about his team. It's not just him. And that's yeah. why it works. That's the biggest thing. He's probably the best teammate ever. And like he NBA has history. to be. Like the most selfless star ever. Dude, he could score 30 a night easily. Easy, yeah. Like even when KD was there, mm-hmm. he could have done it. But yeah. the thing, the reason that why that team worked is because KD is the same way. Mm-hmm. Like if Steph, like, like if Steph has a better shot than KD, KD would have given it up to Steph. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's why it worked. Amazing. Um, but you know what? The thing that I hate, dude, people talk about um, the Warriors when KD went down and they lost and stuff. And there yeah. was like this whole narrative that Steph can't win without KD. Dumb. The thing was, since they got KD, like they had to, spe- to spend so much money yeah. on KD that their bench wasn't like it was yeah, in the past. Yeah, they have depth. Yeah. So it's like now they actually have depth and you mm-hmm. see what happens now. Yeah. I mean, in 2015, they won. Obviously, Kyrie got hurt, but it's like I'm, Steph's just dude. Coded. They won with Andrew Bogut yeah. as their center. Dude, they've won with zero big man like every year. Yeah, and now they're gonna have James Wiseman, bro. People were talking about that team, 2015, 2016, and they're like they're so stacked. And you look at their team going like now, and you're yeah, like Barnes, Bogut. They weren't that was, stacked. Was Lee even there? Did he no, leave? I don't Damien, think, not I don't, Damien Lee, the other Lee, the the white guy, the uh, uh, David Lee. David is that his Lee. Name? Yeah, was he, he even he, there in 2015? I'm not sure. Hurt? I'm not sure. Dude, that's cr- yeah. Everyone at, and then 2016, 2015, 2016. Everyone's saying the same thing. Yeah. how stacked it was, and they went 73 and nine. But it's like it's just Steph Clay, it's literally, Dre, and yeah, Iggy. Exactly. Like, Iggy ran the bench. The system around the bench and it's like their system is just so good i know that's literally what it is it's not it's, it's not about the team coach being gap. just insanely talented well one it is about steph and it's a coach gap dude i just think that steph like low-key bro no one's gonna agree with me i just think he's the best player ever dude <laughs> like i'm not kidding and the re- like i think by the end of his career he will the be. reason i'm saying it is because it's just him being on the court it's yeah. like mm-hmm. and he can do anything yeah. Like he could just take you off the dribble, just drive to the basket, find the open person. Yeah. They have to guard him from half court and it just opens up so much. Mm-hmm. Like I just think he's the most impactful player. Yeah. I think there's like a, um, there needs, cause you know, they, everyone does all, does all these lists. Steph, when it comes to like the most unique player and yet great player the game's ever seen, he's like in a category of his own. Yeah. Cause he's, sure. He's so set apart from the LeBron. Mike. Obviously, LeBron and Michael are even set apart, but like Kobe and Michael are similar. That's what people yeah. would say, like in play style. Um, and it's just like Steph, if he wanted to, he'll get 10 assists a night plus on a day. He could get 30 a night if he wants to. He could probably fight for 10 rebounds a night. Right? Yeah. But it's like he'll have so many hockey assists. Yeah. So many times where they'll they'll just crash on him, and then someone gets a free cut to the basket. And it's like they talk about gravity, but it's even more than gravity. It's, yeah, it's like it's you, like meant like they're always have their mind on Steph. Yeah, no matter what. And also, it's like Steph isn't like how am I gonna score? Mm-hmm. He's like how are we how gonna are score? we gonna score? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And sometimes if he if he's double teamed, which he should like people double team him so much because it's just like you kind of have to mm-hmm. and he'll just pass it knowing that he's not going to get an assist yeah but just knowing that that will free somebody else up because then the defense is going to have to collapse mm-hmm. and that can open something up for them to score do you want to hear this 2015 2016 roster well, yeah all right they had barbosa leonardo barbosa who was like a decent role player harrison barnes 
Andrew Bogut, Ian talk Clark. The mic, the mic. Oh, am I? Oh, I was too low. Ian Clark, Steph, Festus Azalee, Draymond Green, and Andre Iguodala, Sean Livingston, Kevon Looney, James Michael Mc, Mc, McAdoo, whatever. Don't know that. Brandon is. Rush, Maurice Spates, Jason Tom, Thompson, Clay Thompson, Anderson Varejao. Yeah, whoever, who the, who the heck is that going? <laughs> it's man? like, were they really that stacked? No, they weren't. It's literally Steph and then coaching diff. Yeah, it's, it's a coach gap for sure. And it's like, especially at that point, people are like, we actually don't know how to guard this team. And the tallest guy on their team, they had Bogut, who's seven feet, and they have Festus Azili, but like Andrew Bogut? Yeah. It's, it's, it was more just like this offense was brand new. No one really knew how to yeah. stop it. Yeah. Did you see Andrew Bogut, I think, is still working with the Warriors? Is he? I don't think he's left. That's Dude, that's why I and love... And Sean Livingston is the same. Dude, that's Andre why Iguodala I love the Warriors. It's just like, bro, it's a, people, it's a family, bro. They leave the team. They want to well, come back. Yeah, they leave the team, like the starting roster. Yeah. But then they're just working behind the scenes. Yeah. Like, and that's what I love. So I feel like that's just so different from other. GP2. That's why he even got to the yeah, roster because he was going to be the camera, like uh, work in the yeah. video room. And then he would, he would just went every it's day. It's just crazy. It's crazy to me. But honestly, I'm kind of scared for when Steph retires, dude. Yeah. Me too. I hope he retires with at least five. Yeah. I saw someone too. on TikTok. It was like. This is my prediction for who's going to be the best player ever in um, by 2040. So he did like a top 10 list. He had Steph number one. <laughs> and he had like Jason Tatum number three. I was like, get out of here. And he had like Michael number two, LeBron number four. Luca was up there. I forget. He had freaking, but I was like, Jason Tatum. Yeah, that was weird. Dude, that you guy's know, not going to be in there. The, the team that I'm actually scared of, the only team. I tell you mine. The Grizzlies for me. That that's what I was gonna think, dude. I just think that um, what's his name? Not just John Morant, Jaron Jackson. Jaron Jackson is a beast. He's really freaking good, and he's young. Like, how old is he? He's probably like 21. 22. 22. He's like the same age as Jordan Poole. The kid is together. so young, mm -hmm. and he's just long, athletic. Yeah, <clears throat> he's just only gonna get better. Yeah, I think it'd be interesting. If Wiseman is healthy to see how that matches up because Wiseman people are like we haven't seen him play It's like no we saw him play and he was getting pretty good with the yeah. offense But then he got hurt and then Steph got hurt that I think that's the that's the diff once James James Wiseman And like, I know like playing. clay and James worked so much worked out so much together and like learning and because they rehab together So I I mean and he was there the whole process through the championship So I can't imagine he's not learning and growing just yeah, from what, I like, think watching everything. I think it's possible for the Warriors to win next year and possibly the, the year, year after that. Yeah. But then after that, I'm like, they're done. Yeah. Yeah. Cause Steph will be 37 going yeah. to the year after that. Yeah. And it's like, uh, shooters could stay in for a while, but 37, yeah, but, like but, that's where you're like, he says he's still in his primey things, but you start losing his step. Ex you know? Exactly. But like, dude, but like if they could get someone that could create, they're not going to create as much attention that could just, a young star that's going to create they're, attention. They're Steph's trying to do that. They're trying to do that with Jordan Poole. Yeah. The only thing about Jordan Poole is he's just not Steph. He's wild. He's he like is wild, wild, but he likes to be tame. He has. You can tell the coaching staff is working, or their player development team. Yeah. Is working with him like so well because you can see, like, his eyes just where they're going, and yeah. they're always in the right spot. He's just late. It's just always late. Yeah. Like Steph. Draymond especially too it's like they just know what's going to be happening before mm -hmm. it's there yeah so they just prepare for that and wait for that moment to come yeah it's like Jordan Poole just realizes it a little bit too late mm -hmm. but if he can do that and just get to a point where you know he's seeing it before it happens mm -hmm. like it'll be solid but at the same time he's just not Steph like yeah you know so. it'd be nice it'd be nice to see because I, I saw glimpses of it in the finals where when him and Steph were, and Dre were on the floor at the same time you could tell that he wasn't like trying to run the offense himself and he knew his role and you'd see him do like split screen, split cuts yeah, and yeah. like that. And he'd like fade right, you know. I don't um, like when he runs the offense at this yeah, moment. When he's off the bench and it's him and Clay and it's like it's just all discombobulated. It's like he yeah, it's a lot of him dribbling and not a lot of movement. So when it's him and Steph and Draymond, it seems a little better when he's like moving around and doing stuff. Yeah. So it's nice. But 
Steph is just too special of a player, dude. I don't think we'll ever too see special. anything like it. And it's like, it's so hard to say that because you just, you don't know like what the future is going to be like. Yeah. But like people are like, they talk about Trey Young. Bro, he's so far off from Steph. It's yeah. crazy. Well, like all these players, these new players, everyone's comparing to Steph because they could shoot. But it's like one year in the league it's like okay they're not Steph yeah but it's not just shooting yeah yeah for sure everything well that's why else, like, like people the closest thing people can compare to Steph is like Damian Lillard and how far is Damian Lillard from yeah, Steph yeah it's like <laughs> it's crazy did you well the, this could be the last thing we talk about basketball did you see the thing I think Damian Lillard posted a picture on his I, I think I saw it was like his Instagram and it was KD in a Trailblazers uniform next to Dame. Wait, really? Yeah, like that. I, it was something like that. I don't know if he posted it or there was something. No about way, it. Dame posted that. No way. I don't think he can legally, but something happened. I saw like a. It was on Snapchat. Yeah, you know, like yeah, a Snapchat yeah. story. And I scrolled through. It was like Damian Lillard posted this. Blah, blah blah. I was like, really? I don't think he can. But that's cool. If the Nets get blown up, that'll be freaking hilarious. Yeah, and they might just blow up. Ben Simmons will be by himself. That freaking trash can that doesn't want to play. That's what he gets. I think the thing about KD, like, he can't single-handedly just carry a team. No. Like, that's the difference between KD and LeBron. Yeah. Like, I think KD is, like, that finishing piece where it's, like, if you have KD, you're just winning. Yeah. Like, there's no doubt you're winning. Yeah, but I feel like Michael couldn't do that either. Like, he had Pippen... Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, you need, like, the you surrounding pieces. pieces, but, like, you should see, like, they were doing stats with Michael Jordan. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of impact, like, I know, like, Steph is, I, say, I believe Steph is the most impactful, mm -hmm. but the numbers actually say otherwise. Yeah, like, Michael, Jordan. Michael Jordan's, like, by far the most impactful player ever. Did you see, was it, the, which year was it when everyone on the Cavs was hurt and LeBron beat the Celtics in the Game 7 to get to the Finals? And LeBron literally had nobody. <laughs> like Kevin Love was getting like five points a game, and that was it. It's all he had. I don't even know if he had. Um, yeah, I don't know. It was, but they, and then they got like swept in the finals, like real quick. By yeah, KD. yeah. But I was like, dang, this guy LeBron really has nobody. That's what I'm saying, dude. Like he has J.R. Smith. That's what he had. He had J.R. <laughs> and Iman Shumpert, bro. Yeah, depressing. But like, yeah, LeBron's like that. If you just have LeBron, you're just you're getting carried. It doesn't yeah. matter who you have on the squad. He's going to make it work somehow. Mm -hmm. um, besides this year, because he had Westbrook. Yeah, Westbrook But is that's negative. just, that's, yeah, exactly. No. Negative efficiency. If you have, you know, just like role players just surrounding him, yeah. like LeBron will find a way to like use that. Yeah. If but you have I don't, smart players. I don't yeah. think like KD doesn't have that sort of impact. No, yeah. Because he's not like the facilitator and the ball handler. He's like an ISO. Get out of my way. Yeah. I'll score real quick. That's what it's like. That's why KD on the Warriors was just like unstoppable. This was yeah. unstoppable because you have Steph, yeah, who can score at will anytime he wants, mm -hmm. and he's going to create so much offense. And then you have KD. It will just like that's like the probably finishing. the greatest team ever. That's like the finishing punch. They lost one playoff game one year. I think it was like 2017. Yeah, one playoff game. They destroyed everybody. I was like, oh my god. I I love when people talk about it because they were like, dude, the thing about. Like the team with Steph and KD was, it was just unfair. This is why people hate it, started yeah, hating the Warriors because it, it was like it was unstoppable. It was like you knew what was going to happen. Yeah, and they were like, the only time they would lose is when they just wouldn't give that much effort. But yeah. then when they tried, it just they just up. won every game. It was like in the playoffs they started trying and they won like tw I forget how many yeah. straight games. Yeah, but it was a ridiculous amount. It was crazy. It was like seventeen straight playoff games or something like ridiculous yeah. like that. Do you remember that play against the Timberwolves where KD hit it, but they said the foul was on the ground? Yeah. And then they didn't get him free throws. So Steph hit the shot, and then it was just he's <laughs> laughing at the refs. And then he got a. Uh, and then KD missed, I think. Yeah. But it was crazy. Oh, yeah. No, KD got fouled. He hit the shot, but then they called it off. The, yeah, the, so then Steph hit the shot, and then he laughed at the refs. I think he got fined for that, too, which is crazy. I was like, Dude, really? The thing is. um. Steph, there was like another time that it happened. I forget like what year it was. Maybe it was, it wasn't that long ago. Maybe it had been like 2020. Mm -hmm. And like Steph tried to hit a layup. He missed it. Yeah. He thought he got fouled. He starts screaming at the ref like yeah, mad, yeah, yeah, yeah. bro. <laughs> and then like just didn't get a call. He got teed up. Yeah. And then just started going crazy, bro. <laughs> 
like just started hitting every three it just he was like at the end like he hit the one it was like the final three yeah. like just to put the nail in the coffin he's like <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah i did see tactical <laughs> bro he's the only player to ever give that's a ref pe- a he said he's petty bro that's he petty. he's the petty king yeah he's so petty bro that's hilarious dude i freaking love it he's I love it. So when steph gets in those modes it's like my favorite thing ever yeah but we did talk about basketball for a while and we're not even basketball podcast no we're not maybe we should transition to um what should our name be to balls in the basket to balls in the sack <laughs> that's a good idea i like that one it's a good name that's perfect but that's gonna do it for today All i right. don't this was a i feel like this long. was a long podcast i thought we were gonna it's almost three i yeah, thought we were long. gonna have like a 30 minute podcast i'm not gonna lie i did too but then we started talking about basketball and then we talked about random stuff yeah so long yeah well, thank you guys for tuning in if you guys have if you guys are still here hopefully yeah. um uh, post like questions down in the comments so we could answer yeah. them for the next podcast. Yeah, we'll do like a few week. Yeah, exactly. And also um, follow like the Spotify playlist. We're going to be adding to the to that playlist weekly. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, thank you guys for tuning into this podcast, and we'll see you guys next week. Peace out. Peace out.